Welcome back to Horns High Studios for another episode of 666 Seconds of Murder. That means each video is less than 666 seconds, or you guys know it, 11 minutes and 6 seconds. So let's get to it. Got a lot to cover as always. Talking Idaho 4 once again. And this time concentrating on Jack and Dylan, Jack Showalter and Dylan Mortensen. But remember, this video is for entertainment purposes only. These are my opinions, my speculation. I'm not saying anyone's guilty of anything. We're just having a conversation about a case that interests us. Just as simple as that. Now, most of us that follow this Idaho 4 case know the names Dylan Mortensen and Jack Showalter. These two names draw a lot of concern among the true crime community and questions about their possible roles in the crime that happened on King Road. Allegedly, of course. Some among the community feel Jack should not be in the conversation since he was cleared by police. But the overwhelming majority feel he was cleared way too quickly. How does a person who may have been one of the last to see two of the victims alive get cleared in a few days before all the evidence was processed? Furthermore, how does a person who clearly said, they're going to get you, Maddie, on video an hour or so before the incident not get a closer look? Did they analyze the unknown DNA found at the scene to clear him? I doubt it. What about the fact that Jack lived next door to the scene, and allegedly his alibi was that he took a five-hour drive to his parents' home in Boise, or I've also heard the hunting cabin in that same area. Is his, video, is his, is his vehicle on camera? What time did he arrive in Boise? I've stated before, how does his alibi sound more convincing than Brian Koberger saying he likes to drive at night because of insomnia? I don't see that it's any better. What about Dylan Mortensen? Her eight-hour delay in calling 911 has been a huge concern with everyone that follows this case. Are we supposed to believe her ridiculous story in the PCA that talks about a frozen shock phase, hearing voices but not blood-curdling screams, and seeing a man clad in black and then going back to bed? I mean, it's just absolute insanity. It's ridiculous. If Dylan wasn't a female, would she get the same pass? If either of the two survivors were male, would they get the same treatment? Or would they be in a cell next to Brian Koberger at the Latah County Jail? So why do these two get a pass? I've been thinking a lot about this lately and doing some research into Jack Showalter's family and connections. I have to say, it comes down to money and power. It's as simple as that. Jack's parents are both medical doctors and give generously to the University of Idaho. I've read that he is related to the Attorney General of the state of Idaho, at least at the time of the incident. With that sort of power and privilege, things tend to get swept under the rug. I'm not sure if that happened here, but the fact that he wasn't dragged into an interrogation room for hours or held in custody until they could sort things out, makes me wonder, would any of us get treated the same way? I'm not saying he's guilty of anything. I mean, it's smart to lawyer up at a situation like this. But rumors he left the country for South Africa, where he's got some family, just adds to the questions surrounding Jack Showalter. What about Dylan? Now, we know her mother is an attorney. Her stepmother was working for the state of Idaho. Now, she may not have come from the same level of privilege as Jack, but it does make me wonder, again, was she given a pass because she was female? Same with Bethany. If either of them were male, would they get the same treatment? What if they were males of color? 
would they get a pass? I have serious doubts about that. Or was Dylan or Bethany an informant that they wanted to protect? The fact Dylan and Bethany didn't properly report the incident to law enforcement should have put them both in a prison cell for a while. I mean, at an absolute minimum, a lot more if they were involved. Or is law enforcement still investigating these crimes? Are Jack and Dylan, among others in this story, still being looked at? I may be jaded, but I doubt it. I think they've all got their eggs in their Koberger basket. Now, an odd coincidence is that allegedly Jack and Dylan were in the same class at Boise Senior High School. So I would assume they knew each other pretty well. Does that factor into the events that unfolded at the house on King Road? Were these two involved in some sort of conspiracy? We don't obviously know, and we're only speculating here. Jack and Dylan are the are only two of a cast of characters that make up the story of the Idaho Four. But the fact the true crime community has issues with them above the others made me want to do this video. I'm not accusing either of them of being part of this crime. I'm just saying that they have some explaining to do to make the public see they weren't involved in this before anyone can cross them off their list of suspicious people. Now, I've decided not to hold my breath for something to happen with either of these two so I can keep doing videos for you guys. For a minute, imagine if this was a movie. Would you believe the nonsense in the PCA about Dylan? Would you be suspicious of the rich kid who was whisked away behind a wall of attorneys? I doubt it. Would you believe your kids if they came to you with these ridiculous stories? If you suspected them of doing something wrong? Absolutely not. I wouldn't do that as a parent or grandparent. I guess we'll have to wait for the trial to learn more about how things went down. I hope we find out the answers to our questions. I certainly hope that the trial is done fairly and the truth comes out so the victims in this story can get the justice that they deserve. So what do you guys think about this? I know these two have, have gotten you guys fired up. I read the comments and, and these two seem to just be dominating the comments whenever I bring them up. So I thought it was appropriate to do this video on the both of them. But as always, I love you guys' comments. So drop them down below and let me know what you think about it. Now, I want to thank the members of the Horns High Club, the membership here on the channel. That's Leslie Perry, Catalyst Do, FHI67, Christopher Ferguson, Sarah, Batsheet Crazy, Christine079, Dovey, Glowy, Justine Cooper, and Jennifer. You guys are awesome. I appreciate it. If you're interested in it, it's only $1.99 a month, but obviously you don't have to do that if you don't want to. That's fine. I appreciate you being here and uh, everybody that watches these videos. I really do appreciate it. Uh, so I thank you for watching another episode of 666 Seconds of Murder, and we'll see you next time.